Hello everyone, welcome to the session today. So let us go through this agenda for today. And we'll see how much we can actually complete. Uh, I thought like now we can actually go over uh, two or three major topics related to dictionary. So the, the agenda for today is to make you familiar with the data structure that is known as dictionary. And then I'll just let you know what is a dictionary and how do we create dictionary? How do we deal with it? And during the creation, there are various ways we can actually create the dictionary. And then I'll just let you know how to access the elements of a dictionary. Basically, dictionaries are actually nothing but key value pairs. So how do we access the elements of dictionary? And then once we are done with like now how to access the elements of dictionary and as like other uh, data structures like uh, shared, oh, sorry, um, a tuple and then list covered so far, we do have traversal. So in dictionary, how do we traverse it? Okay, there are like you know, multiple ways we can actually traverse it. We can traverse using keys, we can traverse using values. Okay, and then and then we can traverse using like basically the values, iterating the values using values and iterating the keys using dot keys and traverse keys without specifying the keys method and then iterate all values key value pairs basically or like you know, items basically using items and these are various ways we can actually traverse and uh, ideally it is going to take uh, 60 to 75 minutes that is one or 10 minutes to cover the entire thing that is the basic when i'm talking about like an entire thing dictionary has like a lot of things to cover but the basic dictionary concept we'll be able to learn in another one hour or one and a half hour of time. Okay, so let us get started. And uh, before we get started and start writing the program, let us try to understand what is dictionary. Okay, so dictionary is what we can actually call as dictionary, as, right? If you're actually familiar with any of the programming languages and heard about name like an associate array, if you're coming from a Linux or Unix background, you must have heard about associate array in the bias. Then associate array is also there in AWK. And we do have associate arrays in other programming too. So it is just the same over here and it is known as dictionaries in Python. Okay, so dictionary, like how dictionary will look like a key value pair. What is a key value pair? You'll be like wondering if you're actually hearing about dictionary for the very first time, you'll be you'll be wondering like you now what is a dictionary all about, right? So don't worry. In 15 minutes of time, you'll come to know like what is a dictionary and how to how to use it. Okay. Then I'm just going to tell you about how do we define the dictionaries. Uh, think about like you now list. We are actually using square brackets. Think about uh, moon brackets. Like you now we are round brackets. We are actually using it for tuple. Similarly. We are actually going to use dictionaries, uh, like in a curly braces for the dictionaries. And remember, this curly braces is used for dictionary, and this curly braces is also used for set. And don't be confused, like, you know, what is a set and what is a dictionary set? We are yet to cover set. So for now, I'm just going to tell, like, you know, to define the dictionary or create the dictionary, create the dictionary, we need to actually use. We need to use like na curly braces over here, okay? So that that's how we can actually specify the dictionaries over here, okay? So now, what is the dictionary all about? Let us uh, like na break the ice, okay? So here it is. Uh, let's say for example, I want to store the information about Shubu, okay? Let's say I'm just going to store the information about Shubu. What are the properties? What are the variables I need? Think about. We are not going to use dictionaries. You want to store the name. For name, you need to actually have a variable. Then you need to store the age. Age, you need to have the variable. Mobile, you need to have a mobile number. Let's say I'm having a secondary mobile number. You will need another variable like a secondary mobile number. You need UID, identification ID, you can put it. You need PAN card, you can have another variable. You need like you know, my permanent address, you can have another variable, okay? And you need my current address. C A D D R. you can have another address over here. Let's say you need my uh, like an you know, education details, you can have another variable here. You need my salary information, you can have another variable name. So uh, it looks like 
like right, if you want my school details elementary school details like where did i study standard one where did i study standard two where did i study like now my 10th and my masters and everything so and if you want to change to all the addresses then you need like no separate variables think about i want to store the population details let's say for example india we want to kill store all the states then all the district names all the village names all the like no municipality names then we do have like no definitely if you are actually storing all the details about the people who are living in india then it's a bigger list we cannot actually accommodate in any data structure ideally we do not store anything like in a variable and access it it will be like you no know, too much of time it is going to take first thing and the second thing is it is like you now whatever variable you are actually defining it is containing like you know, memory and we can actually find out that memory details memory details uh, like you now using methods in build methods which are actually available so we are we are not at cover like you now that one so that is the reason i'm not going to tell about like you know, how to identify how much memory it is actually going to take and all so think about if you want to tell store information about so for this information you need multiple variables then you can actually access it instead of doing that dictionary you can actually define a dictionary you can define here dictionary syntax is let's say here i can give like a dictionary name and then let me increase the font here for better readability dictionary name then here i can specify the key and here i can specify the value let's say it is key 1 it is value 1 similarly i can have key 2 value 2 and if you ask me like how many keys and how many values basically we can have n number of keys but don't use like now i have never seen in real time i have never seen like no dictionary is containing millions of keys maybe 100 or 200 that is that makes sense but if it is more than that then we need to actually reevaluate do we really need that because it is like now going to cost us a lot in the run time and burn it because it uh, memory it is going to consume a lot so now look at here the dictionary key and value this is the definition let's say you want to store information about an employee let's say in consider my information i want to kill store my information i can specify name and then here i can specify like na shubhu and then here i can specify comma let's say current location i'm just giving here uh, value is the value is i'm just giving bangalore and current country current country i'm just giving the value as india let's say i'm just putting my salary the this is not the exact amount i'm just going to put it here but i'm just giving like now maybe some value is like not 12000 rupees okay so now here i'm having like the mobile number mobile number i just put some junk number here which this is getting recorded so so that's that's fine so mobile number i put it here my pan card again i'm just giving like in a ind bbx 2315x this is a dummy number again and then i have my uid that's the other id uid card okay unique identity number i have unique identity number again it's a number if i want to store it number then that's fine or else if i want to store it in this format so again this is another dummy number okay so now these are the details i'm storing now this is how we can actually define the dictionary this is how we can define the dictionaries now if we can actually uh, like na store the values like na like this in a variable like info and it is enclosed in square bracket uh, sorry uh, curly braces this is known as dictionary so 
your dictionary. So now here, if I want to access the value name, then how do I actually access it? So to access any value, dictionary values, what we can actually do, we can definitely use a print statement. Here I can define, uh, or I can actually use info, then what is the key I'm actually looking for? I'm looking for name, it is going to print name. Let's say I want to actually print the, the, the mobile number, I can actually specify, I can specify here like you know, the mobile number. Okay, so now here we go. If I do this in a program here in the PyCharm, let us see how it looks like in a failure dictionary example. Python file. And in this dictionary example, I'm just going to put together all the information. Okay, so now if I'm running this program, you can see the output is name is Subasis and the number is here now just see like how is how easy it uh, is this because instead of having multiple variables like name c location c country india sorry salary mobile pan uid and all we can directly access like this but if you're having like you know name in small case always remember guys the keys are actually case sensitive that is the nature of the dictionary. You cannot, you cannot use the key. Let's say, for example, the key is actually not present here. It is going to give you the key error. If I'm actually running this program, here you can see this is this is like a key error. Now here you see this name is actually not present because keys are keys are case sensitive. If it is not present, it is going to throw error. Okay, you can uncomment and experience the error as well, like you know, in, during your practice. Now, if I'm specifying, if I'm specifying something like this, the key is not at all present. Let's say I don't have my date of birth, but I want to print my date of birth, DOB. DOB is not present. Again, we are going, going to get key error because DOB is not present. If I'm running this program, here it is saying like a key error, DOB, this is not present. Key is not present. Not present. So now here, here we go, okay? So this is how we can actually define a dictionary and we can access the value by using the keys. In this case, I've used name, mobile, and DOB. Now, the question is, if I am actually writing the entire dictionary like this, like print info, what it is going to print? Is it going to print a, uh, like a you know, dictionary or the values? Let us execute and see, like, you know, what is going to happen? It is going to print, okay, when it, we need to do comment it out because this key is not available. But if I'm running this program again, here you can see the entire dictionary as is. Okay, so if, if a requirement is to print the entire dictionary as is, you can actually print like this. Now I'm just writing another program. Okay, I'm just taking like you no know, dictionary two. I'll just like you know, write the dictionary in multiple or define the dictionary in multiple lines. So let's say dict exam, dict example two. This is the basic example again. Now I have defined like a you know, name is this and then country you want to actually put together everything in different lines okay so now here we go so i'm not specifying this space pycharm is actually taking care of that one if you can see you can actually put the braces over here you can put the braces over here also so this is like you can read it better this is like how you can actually read it better so dictionary key values can be actually put together in multiple lines. You can ask me, can I have like a two per line? Of course, we can actually define. We can also define like this. It is not going to throw any error. If you are actually learning this program, it is going to work fine. Like, you know, it is not going to throw any error. If you want like you not know, two for each line, that is also fine. As long as it is readable to you, then you can actually do that. So ideally, I've seen like, you know, either in one line, or the values are actually broken like this, 
for better readability okay there is no hard and fast rule that you should actually put two key and two key and two values per line and this is the best practice there is nothing written so everything depends on you and depends on your automation project scope and if you all decided okay let us do the defined dictionary definition like this you can go ahead you know use that or else if you want to put together everything in one line that is also fine okay but ideally ideally we will not actually define this big dictionaries in real time then real time we are going to hit the endpoints like you know the restful api endpoints to get the data let's say for example you are looking for a customer information like customer id the last month bill details what is the customer's email address when the last bill was actually generated if there is in pending be pending bills all these things you can actually find it out using a restful call restful api call then the rest api is going to return the input in the json format okay and from the json you can definitely convert the json data to a dictionary and access it okay now this is how we can actually access the value so now let's say for example i have a dictionary which is completely empty how do i actually define a empty dictionary now let us write another program now dictionary empty example here i'm just giving like a dictionary 1 equals to nothing dictionary 1 equals to nothing now if i'm going to if i'm going to put together the information like this let's say for example i do have a print statement here print dictionary 1 and if you run this program here you can see it is saying like null if you want like you know what is the type of this you can give type of dict1 okay now it is going to say like it is the dictionary class okay class dictionary okay so now if i want let's say for example i have dictionary 2 and dictionary 2 is let's say name equals to the not equals to name colon let's say subhasis okay now let's say dictionary 3 i do have something like this let's say company equals to let's say i'm just giving it walmart okay so now if i'm running this program uh look okay, let me do one thing now print dict2 and dict3 dictionary 2 and dictionary 3 now here you go here it is printing name subhasis company equals to almat now you want to actually you want to merge these two dictionaries this is a take away please click like, you know, do one thing may remember this okay and in real time whenever there is a requirement of merging two dictionaries you can actually do that using merging let's say i'm just giving here i'm just giving like you no know, star up dict to i think it should work let us see star up dict3 okay now if i'm giving you a print dict4 hopefully it is going to work here you can see dict4 is actually name and company it has got the values okay why did not copy this we'll see double star and double star here now if you give here and here you can see name subhasis name and walmart let me see let me tell you few things now this is dictionary for so i'll just keep it as is and whenever you want sorry whenever you want dictionary 5 and you can put a double star here and we'll discuss about like you know, what is a single star here what is the double star here i'll explain like in a later sessions for this for the time being i'm just going to skip it because it's not present in the scope of this today session okay so now look at here whenever you are actually giving 
giving like you know only single star it is actually picking the values like this the first value is only the keys basically the key here is name and the key uh, key here is actual company and we are getting like in you know, a company name okay company name dict two and dict three it is saying like in you know, a company name this is not in order now here in dict five and here you can see we are using two times asterisk mark dictionary two followed by dictionary three here we are getting like names versus company well met okay so this is how you can actually do a merging and this is how we can actually define define a empty dictionary okay this is how we can actually define an empty dictionary empty dictionary is nothing but uh, double double curly braces superior so familiar with like uh, empty tuples that is double moon round brackets and like you know open round bracket followed by close round bracket and list that is square bracket uh, only one open square bracket and one square uh, one close square bracket is going to um, help you to create a empty list similarly empty dictionary this is how you can actually create a empty dictionary so that's all about like you know, creating a empty dictionary and then merging it as per the requirement merging the dictionaries as per the requirement we have we have various uh, like an option uh, like an operations we are going to do that let's say for example if you are having a dictionary dictionary 2 and you want to add a key like in a company walmart over here then how do i do it let me tell you that okay let you let me tell you that now new python file now i'm just giving like a dictionary update dictionary update python file now i'll just use these two dictionary 2 and dictionary 3 here we have a dictionary 2 now we are actually trying to uh, sorry dictionary 3 is here now i want to actually add this dictionary 3 to dictionary 2 what i can do here is dictionary 2 dot update here i can say dictionary 2 dot update is dictionary 3 i can directly give like dictionary 3 here and print dictionary to print dictionary to if i'm giving dictionary to over here you can see it here right the output and then the output over here right it is name subasis and we have added like you know dictionary three it is like all the key values you can actually ask like whether it is actually going to work with only one key and one value no we can actually have n number of values let's say for example i have joined dual mart like now in the year of 2020 for example so now or i'm just going to join in 2024 hopefully so now here i'm just specifying like you know year 2024 let us see here like if i'm running this program here you can see names versus company walmart and year 2024 everything is actually added here now you have decided that's fine right now i want to add my current location that is dictionary 2 dot update update here i'm just giving like location that's a location equal to india location is india i think it should be location equals to india what's being done let me see uh, i think something wrong with the syntax update location invalid syntax let me see what is the syntax i think it should be the update we can definitely use a key and value pair and then it should be equals to value okay that's fine so i can specify location equals to value okay this is the syntax we can do this way we can actually add that location equals to value this way the error was happening because i was still quoting the variable equals to value right so that is the reason it was not working while adding a new key make sure like now it is not quoted the value should be quoted if it is a string okay so now if i'm running this program if i'm running this program here you can see it is getting executed successfully and if you want to see here on the result this program here you can see the location has been added what if you are actually giving location equals to india then i'm just giving like in a my mobile number equals to something junk 
Okay, now I've just given mobile number here. This is also going to work. Now you can see it here. Location India and mobile is actually added. Yeah. One thing you can notice here, this is actually ordered. Ordered means this is actually ordered. Now here you can see the first value is Subasis, then we have actually added here to Walmart, then year 2024. Then it became the second uh, element is actually company here, and the third element is actually year. Here you can see the fourth element is actually location, and the fifth element is actually mobile. Here you can see this is the fifth element. This is the this is the fourth. This is the fourth element. This is the third element. This is the second element. This is the first element. So that is the reason why we call it as a, call it as actual dictionary actually order. But in Python 3.6 and earlier, the dictionary case, let's say for example, I'm adding something. The user was not having any control. Even today, user is not having any control, like how the keys are actually getting added to the dictionary. But one thing what is happening, Python 3.7 onwards, the order which you are actually adding, it, it will be written. The Python, Python is actually going to return it. Okay. So now let's say for example, key one key two key three key four key five it will be in the order but python 3 dot up to python 3 dot 6 we were having no control when we're actually adding let's say mobile number it may be added here or it may be added in between it may be added in the beginning we have no control you are using update so it will accommodate that particular key value pair but where it is going to accommodate, we are not having any control or like no Python was actually adding it anywhere. Basically, in the associate array, even today, if you are actually using a bias associate array or AWK associate array, bias, I think it is ordered. But AWK, we were we are having no control over it. Like if you are actually going to uh, play with associate array in the AWK, you can actually understand it better. Not sure about the latest version of AWK. If you go for the legacy one, it was also working the same way how it was working till Python 3.6. So this is how we can actually deal with like no dictionaries. Then another question may be arising here. Like how do we define a next nested dictionary? Let me tell you a nested dictionary like now how it looks like. Let's Python file. I'm just giving dictionary nested. Python file. Okay. Let's say I'm just having like an order info. Order info. In the order info, this is how you can see. Let's say I'm having order ID. Order ID just given like you know one two three four. One moment, what's happening today? One two three four. Then I do have the information about this order, particular order, order right? Order ID is here. I want like you know detail order information. Let's say order detail. I'm just giving word detail what did it tell is again this a key but in this key i am having the values in a dictionary order details again a dictionary like the key contains a value that value is actually containing a dictionary let's say i'm having here the dictionary details let's say i'm just going to take it like this information as is instead of typing it i'm just going to copy this one like here okay subas is like now what is the order details order details is uh, i am having like an order details name then here you can see uh, company year and location i think it's junk but it's fine like now for our practice right now so that's fine so let us see like now what's going to happen now Okay, what's going to happen now? Let us see. Okay, now if we want to actually break it for better readability, we can actually do that. So this is how the order details looks like. Okay, this is how the order details look looks like. Now I have the details. 
like in this format yeah. uh, see here guys okay so now location india it was supposed to be here so it was flagging that india should be we are actually not aligning it properly so python was actually flagging it now here we go so this is all about the dictionary if you look at here it is clearly flagging this is the outer dictionary and this is the inner dictionary if i am highlighting here right if i am highlighting here it is actually saying here like now this is the this is the boundary if i am highlighting selecting this line it is saying the boundary is here so it is better right now to identify this now if your requirement is to print the order id how you can actually print it simply take this order id and put it here like in a print here you can say print order info of the key key is order id that's pretty simple but whenever you want like an order details let's say for example if i'm specifying here order details i'm just giving ord underscore details it is actually going to print order details let's see here but from this order details you want the name then what you can how we can actually get it now order details of here you need to give like name now let us see what is going to happen here it is saying subhasis now you want the mobile number we can definitely specify here like mobile number is here i'm having a mobile number mobile number okay so now here we go if i'm running this program you can see it like another data uh, the string indices must be integers one moment it should be here we go Num mobile number like here you can see we're running this program here you can see mobile number here let me tell you another complex example like you know in real time we'll be dealing with this kind of values like you know it is not that simple let's say for example if you are actually familiar with like you no know, service now service now is the ticketing tool and you got the api access and using the api access you can see like you note know, the open incidents available right now and you want to actually do some automations over there using python okay so whenever you are actually making the rest api call to service now and the response you are actually going to get it in the json format okay so it depends like you know if you are having service now xml endpoint but ideally service now support like you no know, json the, the rest of the rest full api endpoint and returns by default in the json formats whenever you are getting like you no know, json formatted data every cd information whatever is there in that incident particular incident is in the service now everything you are actually going to going to get let's when the incident was created who created it who, which assignment group it is assigned to who is currently working since when it is actually open what is the short description what is the long description what is the resolution steps literally everything you can actually get what notes and all this information you are going to get it and it will be all dictionary and if you look at the values maybe around 100 or 150 fields you are actually going to get in the json format once you convert that section json to dictionary the dictionary will be looking very very complex and we do have tools we do have tools to convert like a dictionary to a json formatted value before you post it uh, post like now post using an api uh, jsonify is there and uh, and if you want to like now print the json in a well organized format you can actually use pprint that is here we are actually using print and we can actually use a function pprint i'll just tell you that in the in my examples of json section right how to deal with json files or json content right we'll we'll get familiar with that for now let us concentrate like you know how a complex it's not complex but it is like you know so far as you are beginner so it will look like complex so now let us see like dictionary nested to this is another example I am just copy pasting here. Let's say mobile. I do have my primary mobile. Let's say for example, I have mobile. I'm having men. Nowadays, everybody is having different mobile phones, right? So I have my men phone number here. 
and then i do have my secondary phone or i can say like no whatsapp this uh, is people are actually using a phone for whatsapp which is not reachable using the regular calls only in whatsapp you can actually reach them out so let's say this is my whatsapp number and i do have another key that is my office number office is also providing a page or a number to uh, all the employees so i have just having the office number here and this is a number we can actually use don't no need of using like no of course now see here so this is what it is there now my requirement is if i'm giving mobile it is going to give me the result in this format to see here like in a main whatsapp office now the question is if my mobile number i am having multiple i want what is the whatsapp number for subo for example whatsapp okay now here you can see it is going to give me uh what's up i think something i'm doing wrong here because it should be mobile of whatsapp this is mobile of whatsapp why let us actually format it okay let us format it well organize it okay so this is mobile and it is starting with men now this is men whatsapp then office then i can say here we go and this is a this is correct right yeah so now here i can say sorry here i can say like look at here so now what's happening this is my outer dictionary like you know the complete dictionary order details it is ending here mobile is actually here if i want men that means it should be order info of order details then from order details we'll get mobile then from mobile we can get the key whatsapp okay now here i've given so it is going to return my whatsapp number if you look at my whatsapp number it starts with four five okay so now if i'm running this program here you can see this is my whatsapp number okay so now if you want like shubhu's whatsapp number you can definitely shubhu's whatsapp number so now here you can actually specify that now run this program here you can see it is actually saying shubhu's whatsapp number is this so again it depends let's say for example you want to know like you know how many numbers shubhu is actually having we can do that using like no traversal there are methods available we can actually do that how many keys are actually available how many values are actually available all these things are actually possible and you can also use like you no know, length to let's say for example how many numbers i do have i want to understand like you know whether the length is actually possible here give the length of order in for mobile now see it here okay now here you see it is having three numbers so subu has three numbers this is subu has three numbers i can specify here three mobile numbers now look at here if i'm running this program here it is saying subu has three mobile numbers this is how we have retrieved like no subu's whatsapp number this is how we have retrieved subu's all mobile numbers like what is men number what is whatsapp what is office number and then we have retrieved all the information and we have retrieved a specific information too so this is how we can actually deal with the dictionary nested dictionaries and guys remember so far we are familiar with tuple and familiar with list familiar with dictionary and we are going to learn about set two now in real time when to use what it depends on your project scope and as well as your business requirement for example whether you need a key value pair whether you need a list, whether you need a tuple, it depends on the use cases. Based on the use cases, we'll be selecting the respective data type. Let's say in this case, dictionary. This is meaningful, like storing information of a order, 
or information of a person in India or any other country, information about all the countries, a dictionary is very, very easy. Okay. And whenever you are having, let's say, for example, a list of orders and order volumes, okay, um, you can actually go ahead with, let's say, for example, order ID uh, 1234 then followed by what is the amount of that particular order and you can actually find out like you now what is the let's say order id one two three four the uh, the amount is like you know five thousand order ID three four five six the amount is seven thousand you can actually store it in a dictionary and then retrieve it as per your requirement and as we move forward you can have like a you know, better understanding on various type of data structures so don't worry about it at the time being so now this is how we can actually define the dictionaries, like empty dictionaries, a simple dictionary, access the values, and defining a nested, a nested dictionary and retrieving the values. What's next? How do we traverse? Let us, before we traverse further, let us see like, you know, whatever things I've covered, let us go and like you know, revisit here. So dictionaries are actually implementation of data structure that is like you now a key value pair, right? And then here you can see for better data ability, I'm just moving it here. Data structure that is generally known as the associate array. If you're familiar with like now array in VAS, then you can actually understand or any other programming AWK also supports associate array. If you heard about it, then it is too good. Or else, like we have already gone through it, you can actually understand it. Dictionaries are actually written within curly brackets. We have done that. And dictionary collection of Order like now we can change it. Okay, that is another another thing. Like we should understand, change it and doesn't allow duplicate keys. Let me let me tell you here. Let's say order ID is here, right? And order ID one two three four, and I want to change the order ID to three four five six. That is something which I can actually do. Okay, let me let me show you here. Order ID is here one two three four. It is printing one two three four. I want to actually change it to five six seven eight. Now. Before the change, I'm just printing here, like a you know, print. I'm just giving asterisk mark 50 times. Now, before we change the order ID, the order ID is this one. And I'm just going to change the order ID to 5678. Now, I'm just giving order ID equals to 5678. Now, print the order ID again. It has been changed. Let's print the entire dictionary. Print the entire dictionary. What I can do here is print. I can specify order info. Order info. Now, if I'm running this program, if I'm running this program now, here you can see order ID has been changed to five six seven eight. Okay. So now we can change. So that's the reason why we are actually telling like now it's changeable, changeable, like. And we cannot allow duplicate keys. That is true because dictionary doesn't allow duplicate keys. In any dictionary, let's say I'm having like an you know, order ID as one, two, three, four, I can change it. But I cannot have another order ID over there. Let's say, for example, you want to store the dictionary in this format. Let's say one, two, three, four is my order ID. And this belongs to Subu. This is possible. Let's say two, three, four, five is the order ID. That belongs to Deva, and 3678 is the order ID that belongs to Yogi, and all these things are actually possible, okay? But we cannot say our OID, Subu, OID, Deva, and this is correct. And this is correct, and this is all allowed as well, okay? We can have actually dictionary keys. Let's say, for example, if I'm having order info, order info as this, this is a valid dictionary. This is a valid dictionary. Let us go ahead, you know, try this out. And don't be confused that dictionary keys is always string. Dictionary keys can be can be numbers as well. Let me show you here. Okay. If I give print order info. Order info. Here you can see this is going to work fine. If I want print order info of one, two, three, four, it is also going to work. Remember, guys, do not quote it because 
here our order ID is not a string. If I'm giving like in a no quotes, it is going to work. It is actually going to give me Subu. This one, two, three, four belongs to Subu. It is working fine. If I give one, two, three, four in quotes, it is completely different. It is going to look at one, two, three, four as a string. It is going to fail. And what is the error message you're going to get? Key error. The key error one, two, three, four. Don't do this. If your dictionary keys are actually numbers, it should not be quoted. Okay. If your dictionary number is dictionary keys are actually numbers, it should not be quoted. Okay. Uh, instead of actually putting in sessions, let me create another program and store it for future reference. So now here we go. Dictionary keys. That's an integer. I int type. Okay. So here we go. So this is how you can actually refer it. Now let me let me we have already gone through it. What is Python 3.7? How the dictionaries are actually getting stored in the memory and uh, are ordered, but in Python 3.6 it was not the case. 3.6 and uh, like you know the earlier version basically. Now the creation we have created dictionary and we have created using like now okay there are two other ways we can actually create the dictionary let me tell you that Dictionary using using key value fair we can also care like you know create a dictionary and one moment so dictionary creation creation using dict and and a pair actually the pair is like this let's say i'm having a list in the list one what i have is i have a pair of values that is nothing but tuples okay uh, what are the tuples i have i have like you know let's say one two three four then shubu or i can say name shubu name shubu and then i do have here another pair a location i have bangalore and here i have another pair and that pair is let's say my mobile number and the pair is like i'm just giving some junk value over here so now Whenever I'm a, I want to actually create a dictionary, I can create a dictionary one equals to dictionary method that is dict, D-I-C-T, then I can put it here like a list. That's it, list one. We can do this. If, I, if I'm going to print like a print of dictionary one, we can actually run the program and see. It is actually printing like a name Subu, location Bangalore, mobile is this. So what is the type? If you want to know the type of this, definitely we can get the type of this using method type. Method type. We can actually give the method type. Here we go. If I'm running this program, here you can see class dictionary. And this is actually getting dictionary over here. So this is how we can actually create a dictionary. Let's say I have a dictionary two. I have a dictionary two. Now dictionary two equals to just give dictionary. And let us see print dict two. It is going to create a empty dictionary. It is going to create a empty dictionary. Okay. So this is how we can actually use dict two, and this is how we can actually create a dictionary using the pairs. Let's say I want to create a dictionary on the fly using pairs. Then what I can do here is, uh, let's say I'm just giving dictionary three instead of having a list here, I can put together the value directly here. Let's say I'm just going, going to use like you know these values using a list. I can specify here. Okay. Now, if I'm giving dictionary three equals to this, then print dictionary three, this is also supported. If you're running this program, here you can see it is creating a dictionary name, Subu, location, and Wengler. So what we understood from this example, we can create empty dictionary using dict 
method here without any parameters and wherever it is needed like no create dictionary using pairs when i'm talking about like no pairs it is like a key and value and ideally enclosed in tuples okay it should be enclosed in tuples key value pairs and it is enclosed within a list because i'm having like no multiple tuples over here then that we can actually pass it to the dictionary method as argument and it is going to create a dictionary and in this case it's creating dictionary three in our first case we are having a list in the list we are having three tuples those are nothing but pairs like name subo location bangalore mobile this and then that list we are actually passing as argument to the dict method and it is creating a dictionary one and here is the result we are getting the result here so now let us revisit the creations we have created empty dictionaries we have creation using the dictionary method and creating the dictionary we're using each item pair so this is done accessing the elements of a dictionary we have already gone through it we can add modify change delete any elements using the key and but we cannot we cannot actually click you now we can access all the elements like you now all the keys we can add it we can modify it we can delete it everything we can do it but we cannot add duplicate keys because keys are keys should be unique now i have just shown you like how to merge how to update like you know that is adding a value or adding a key value pair to a dictionary using the update method change modify or change we have done that how we have done that in the previous program i have written order id I have changed from 1 to 3 4 to 5 6 7 8 that is something which we can actually do delete i'm just going to tell in the method section using the same del del like if you if you remember like you no know, del then followed by list or del followed by any variable it was actually going to delete similarly here will so we can actually use del let me tell you right away so no, not a problem so now here you can see this is the dictionary this is the dictionary like you know, which is having name and shubhu i want to delete location i can say delete dict in dictionary 3 of dictionary 3 of let's say location now print the location here like you know print dictionary 3 in the dictionary 3 if you are running this program here you can see the location has been deleted if you remember in the list and tuple we are actually giving the indexes here we need to pass the key that is the only change if i want to delete the entire dictionary i can say like a dict three i can actually delete it now how do i verify it is deleted we is not throwing an error or any message right now print dictionary 3 after deletion you will be definitely getting error because it's already deleted okay so now it is a name error we are actually going to get it because it is already deleted now i'm just telling like you now without looking at this i'm just telling like now we are going to get name error as you write the program you will actually get familiar as i have told in the previous sessions that you should spend time and you should have patience understanding each and every error message program you can write but understanding the error message is the key so the more you understand the error message the more confident you will be actually becoming in the program so you will be becoming more confident in the programming okay so now here you see name error so don't do the already deleted so that's all about like now how do you Add, add using like now update. Basically, there are multiple ways we can actually do it. Using merging, we can do. Using update, we can actually do, right? And modify or change, just key. Using keys, you can actually modify the values or change it. Then delete, we can delete using del. Okay. That's all about how we can actually delete the values. So now, I'm just going to tell you. few of the methods like you know at least two of the methods here keys and values and then we'll see if time permits we can actually go ahead in a learn the entire traversal today or else we'll actually wind up with the traversal now here we go i'm just giving like a dictionary traversal traversal python file 
okay now i'm just going to get the value from here this dictionary order dictionary okay and we'll traverse this and we'll see how to get the details of the order now see here this is a nested dictionary and my requirement is i want to traverse it i want to traverse it it is flagging why because we need to actually give another bracket over here okay so now see here so this is my order id and this is my order detail okay let me do one thing let me simplify it first then i'll just go ahead you know uh, traverse a nested dictionary let us understand like you know, how to traverse a simple dictionary first uh, names versus then i can say company walmart and then year 2004 2024 okay now i'm just going to delete this so this is a very simple one you can able to understand it now before we traverse let me tell you two things you should get familiar with two basic methods of dictionary if i'm specifying let's say for example if i'm specifying like the print order info it prints entire dictionary with keys and values if you give print order info dot keys it is going to print all the keys all the keys like here you can see the data type is dictionary keys and it's printing order id name company year now if you want all the values then what you can actually do here is you can get all the values all the values here all the values here now if you're running this program if i'm running this program here you can see this is all values this is all keys this is the entire dictionary keys and values this is all keys all keys and this one is all values all values okay now traversing let's say my requirement is i want all the values it is anyway printed but if we want to actually traverse it then how do we do it i can specify for let us do do one thing like you now let us don't specify anything see like you now what we are actually get, going to get let's say for item in order info like list if you give like you know item in list you used to get get all the list now if we am giving like you know item in order info without anything without using the keys without using the values and let us see like what the program is going to return whether it is going to return only keys or it is going to return only values let us run the program and understand it like print of item definitely it is going to return all the keys okay it is returning all the keys if you are giving nothing in this case iterate all the keys print the key that's it but if you want all the values then what you need to do you can specify anyway you are getting the key if you want to actually get the values then what you need to give like let us make it make it as more meaningful let's say i'm just giving like a you know, key for key in order info print key it is going to print key order id name company year if you want the values what you can simply do here is you can give like order info of key it is going to give all the values and if you want like you not know, to run this program i you want to have a separator here like you no know, print let's say i'm just printing like you no know, hyphen 50 times or double hyphen 50 times so now here you see if i'm giving this like running this program let us see here it was printing all the keys in the second program you can see all the values if you want like you are like i want all the keys and all the values how do i get it it is very simple you are getting the key you are getting the value if you want like you know all the keys and all the values what you need to do here is you can specify like now here is my key here is my key 
for better readability i want or i can i can specify print key and order order of order of this key that is going to print the value then you can say here hey my separator is my separator is hyphen 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 then arrow and here you can see the result here you can see the result order id 1234 name subhas is company walmart year 2024 okay so now if you want like okay i'm happy with this i'm able to like you know iterate all the keys i'm able to iterate uh, click the keys and getting the values i'm able to iterate click you know iterate the keys and able to print all the keys and all the values the question is how do we iterate with keys only values is there any way we can we can iterate the we can iterate using like no dot keys we can iterate using dot values too we can iterate dot keys and dot values too let me do one thing let me write a program here right away like new python file and dictionary traversal traverse using dictionary traverse yeah, let's say using keys and then values we'll just write one program and learn like you know, how to iterate the keys and iterate the values let's the same dictionary i'm just going to take out the first section i'm just going to take out the this section as well Now I'm just giving like you no know, for key in order in four dot keys. Then here print the key. Print the key. Now for value in value in order in four dot values. Print the value. Print the values. Now let us see like now how it is actually going to work. Here you can see as and when required, you can actually iterate the case. Iterate only values. But if you want to actually do both, then what you can actually do, simply go ahead. Let's say you are like, I want to iterate all the keys, and as well as I want to print all the keys followed by the values all the keys followed by the values then how i can actually do this let's say i can specify for k in or key in k in or key in print what is your key then what is your value that is order of k order input dot k right here you can see k is key and here you can say separator if you want to explicit separator you want to actually use you can do that right and then if you're running this program here you see uh, dictionary okay so what went wrong here so we got all the keys k in keys then order in for dot k let me see what went wrong here so order id name this one is fine then type dictionary object is not accessible what is the object order info dot k mm -hmm. okay so now let let me let me do one thing here we go and that's true okay sometimes we also make error so i'm not always right yeah it was like you know the moon bracket i was actually using and then here i have just used like you know cane uh, square bracket, but let us let us understand it. Let, let us under, understand the error message. Let's say I just did, did this one. Like now, let me explain the error message. Now look at here. What you can see here is it says like type error dictionary object is not callable. Callable means it is it is actually checking this k is a like for example this is a dictionary right. We are passing as argument. Let's say whenever we are actually making function calls, we are actually pin printing like let's print is actually taking this as actual argument, right? So similarly, this is an argument to the dictionary which is not possible. So when we see this is callable, then that means 
there is something wrong with this brackets okay not callable because we cannot call this let's have define a function and i'm calling a function while calling the function i'll be giving like you know, specifying the function name followed by arguments let's say for example print followed by nothing is this is how i'm just calling the print function so in this case you're saying this is not callable when you see like you know, this is not callable that means there is something wrong with the bracket simply you can go ahead you know correct it and then everything should be all right i'm just taking it out and then run this program here you can see order id name then company then year so this is all about like you now how do we traverse it using the case and traverse it using the values similarly we can traverse it like you know using various methods let's say for example here you can see we did it like you now keys returns all the keys values returns all the values traverse using keys done iterate using the values done traverse using keys without using keys because if you are specifying if you are specifying in the previous example i've just given like you know don't specify anything just go ahead you know run the program just go ahead you know run the program without specifying the anything basically okay so now how do we get it here you go where is that actual dictionary traversal here we go okay so now i have not used anything i iterate all the keys like without using any keys or any values that so that is the third type of traversal traverse using keys without using keys method this is this is how we can actually do it it is iterate all the keys okay this is known as traversal using keys without using keys method then iterate all the keys using items i'm just going to tell you this and then we are actually done for the day okay so items now i'm just going to tell you like now how do we iterate the dictionary using items now python file and here we go dictionary traversal using items now python file i'm just going to take the same dictionary same dictionary here okay it is getting printed here okay so now here i can specify order in for dot instead of items just give items print i'm just giving your item basically what it is going to do it is going to return is key value pair as a item that is as a tuple okay so now it returns as a tuple like this here you can see order id the name then company and well met so it starts from here and then here it is in order like in the order which you have defined the same order it is going to traverse so this is like i traverse using the items so this is how you can actually traverse it like if you want to get all the dictionaries using like you know keys values you can do that using items you can actually do that using the dictionary name by default if you are using like no dictionary name it is nothing but the keys okay so it is going to traverse using the keys so these are the various methods using which you can actually traverse and there are many other ways we can actually deal with a dictionary traversal but for now just concentrate only to the basics as you become more familiar with the python programming then we can write like you know complex programs in our real time example section so that's all about for today guys and we have actually gone to the dictionaries in my next session that will be only one session tomorrow and then we are actually going to learn about dictionary methods various methods of dictionary i'm just going to cover then we'll be done with dictionaries tomorrow uh, and then we can actually get started with the next data structure that is known as set so thank you everyone